Let's give this image a dreamy HDR look using only Lightroom Classic for the editing. If you want to follow along as always, you can find a link to download these raw files in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. Since we're working with a scene with super bright highlights and some very deep shadows, we need to merge an HDR to get back the full dynamic range. So I'm going to select all five images down below, right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose HDR. We don't need to change anything in this window, just hit the merge button and Lightroom will automatically create this HDR file for us. Now that we have done the merging, let's do some basic adjustments. First, very important, I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Neutral. As you can see, the Adobe Neutral profile will bring up the darkest parts of the image already quite a bit, which helps balancing the exposure a little bit better. Now to further brighten up this image, what I'm going to do is to bring up the exposure and we can raise it quite a lot since this is an HDR image. So right around here is a very good point. We can see everything even in the darkest parts of the image, but on the other side, of course the highlights will be blown out. Again, since this is an HDR image, we can quite easily fix that by simply pulling down the highlights. And as I pull down the highlights, we can now actually see those light bulbs in the street lights. So I think that's a perfect spot for these highlights. What I'm going to do now to add back some contrast is I'm going to pull down the shadows, which again will make the image darker. You can also spot some clipping on the histogram, but don't worry about that. I want to have this contrast. Of course, I don't want to have clipping. So what I'm going to do to fix that is to bring up the blacks, which will fix that. Also bringing up the blacks again kind of lessens the contrast, but it will also make the image look softer and it kind of gives the image a more dreamy look, which we're aiming for for this scene. Now there's one more thing we can do with the contrast and that's to play around with the whites. Again, looking at, at the histogram, we do have a lot of room right here in the brighter tones. So I'm going to bring up the whites to make use of that room. I do think I'm going to raise them quite a bit, which helps to push the contrast. We will end up with a little bit of clipping in those very bright highlights of the streetlights, but I think at that point it's okay. So once we adjusted the tones, what I like to do next is to adjust the white balance because right now the blue tones are overwhelming and we are losing all the warmth of these streetlights. I want this shot to look rather warm. So what I'm going to do is to bring up the temperature up to a point where I think it looks good. Like with most of my images, I'm not aiming for a neutral white balance. I do want to apply a little bit of color grading using the white balance settings. So I think this is looking really, really good. We still have some blue tones left in the sky, but we have some really warm looking street lights going on. Of course, the colors might be a little bit too strong. What we can do in that case is to bring on the vibrance just a little bit, but I'm going to do some further color grading later on in the editing process. First, I want to bring up the texture to make the details in this image look sharper. And I'm also going to bring up the dehaze, which will help with the contrast. And then to further improve the dreamy effect on this image, I'm going to pull down the clarity quite a bit. This will add some very subtle, nice glow around all these highlights. Now we're done with the basic adjustments. Let's compare the image before real quick and you can already see a huge transformation from this dark, cold looking shot to this well-balanced exposure with some nice warm highlights. Next up, let's focus on a few areas more locally. Therefore, we are going to use masking as always. So let's open up the masking panel. And I want to start with the sky because at the moment the sky is a little bit boring and we can make it more interesting by introducing more highlights and more shadows. So let's start with a simple sky selection. Then I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I'm going to subtract almost all of the sky except for the part just above the buildings. That's because I want to make this area brighter. So what I'm going to do to do that is to bring up the exposure. Let's raise it a lot. And instantly the sky looks much better with this nice gradient going from bright to dark. We can further brighten up the sky. I'm going to bring up the whites for that like this. Wonderful. Now we made the bottom brighter. Let's also make the top darker. I'm going to use another sky selection. And this time I'm going to subtract a linear gradient 
coming up from the bottom. I just want to target the top part of the sky like this. And then let's just bring down the exposure to add some more darkness to the top of the sky like this. Beautiful. Now I think that tower in the distance is drowning a little bit in this image. I want to make it pop. So I'm going to use the objects selection mask. And here it's important we choose the rectangle select mode with which we will have an easier time targeting this tower. All I need to do now is to draw a rectangle around it and Lightroom will automatically select this tower for us. Now we want to make it pop. So I'm going to start by adding some contrast, making the highlights brighter, but the shadows darker. This helps a bit, but I also want to bring up the highlights on its own like this. Then let's also bring up the whites. I really want to make it stand out from the sky behind it. So increasing the brightness really helps here. I do think I'm going to bring down the shadows just to add some more contrast. All right. And maybe we could bring up the temperature just a bit like this. And finally, we could also use some clarity, which will further help make the tower pop. Beautiful. Then there's one more mask I want to add, and that's another objects mask. This time I'm drawing a rectangle around that window on the left side. That's because I want to make this area brighter. On the previous attempt, I did get a pretty good selection. This time, however, it looks really strange. So I need to further modify this mask. I'm going to subtract a linear gradient. Just want to get rid of that bottom part of this window, just like this. And maybe let's subtract another linear gradient for the top part. Okay, this is looking good. Now I just want to add some more brightness to this window by bringing up the exposure. And I'm also going to bring up the whites. Wonderful. And that's it for the masking already. Let me turn off all the masks so we can see the difference from before to after. Actually, I think I want to add one more mask and I want to try something with that. So let me create a linear gradient and I'm going to create it outside of the image. So the whole picture will be affected by this linear gradient. Now I'm going to use the curve to make the image darker. I'm going to create a point somewhere in the middle of the curve right here and I'm just pulling it down very, very slightly. So as you can see, this makes the whole image darker, which I think looks really good, but I don't want to have this effect on the whole image. For example, I want the lights and the windows to stay bright. So we need to modify this mask. I'm going to subtract a brush and on this brush, make sure the feather is set all the way up to 100 to get a soft brush. And I'm going to increase the brush size a bit like this. Now with the brush set up, I'm going to paint over all the areas which I want to stay bright. So for example, this window right here, I wanna add some brightness to it. And you can see this will also help improving the glow effect this image has. So I'm going to continue brushing in some brightness by subtracting from this mask. Let's brush over these street lights and of course this restaurant sign. Maybe even the sky right here. And pretty much all that center part of the image. This is almost like a custom vignetting effect, but I think this is looking really, really good. Let's deactivate this mask to see the difference from before to after. I think that's perfect. Let's maybe also subtract a bit from the foreground right here and the highlights in the door frame. Wonderful, but that's it for the masking. Looking so much better. Now let's also do a little bit of color grading. I'm going to start in the color mixer. There is quite a bit to do. I'm going to start with the hue. What I don't like about this image is the yellowness of all these street lights. I want to change that right away by bringing down the yellow hue, making all these street lights look more orange this way. I'm also going to pull down the orange tones very, very slightly to improve this effect. Now we're done with the hue adjustments. I also want to work on the saturation. So let's go in this tab right here. I want to bring down the orange tones very gently just to tone down all the warmer tones a bit. I think that's a good spot right here. Then on the other hand, I want to bring up the yellow tones, which will specifically target the highlights of this image. So let's raise them like this. 
and I do think I want to bring down the green saturation. You can see this will affect the tower in the distance. I don't think we need that green color up there. So I'm going to get rid of it this way. And I'm also going to tone down the blue saturation because the sky is a little bit overwhelming at this point. But that's looking great. We can also do some split toning in the color grading tab. Let's start with the highlights and of course we want to further emphasize the existing highlights of the image. So I'm going to set up the hue in that way, I'm going to choose an orange color tone right around here and I'm going to bring up the saturation just to make the colors pop. Wonderful. Then for the midtones, I want to keep some of that color contrast. I'm going to use a cold color tone for that. So somewhere around here and let's bring up the saturation. Wonderful. Again, taking a look at the histogram, you can see the midtones of the image might be a little bit too weak. Within the color grading panel, we can change that by making use of the midtones luminance slider. This slider changes the brightness of the midtones. Bringing it down will make the midtones darker. On the other hand, bringing it up will make the midtones brighter. So I want to bring it up very slightly just to push the contrast a little more. Right around here looks good to me. Let's also head into the calibration tab here. As always with my images, I like to bring, I'd like to bring down the blue primary hue. I'm going to drop it quite a bit for this image because I think it looks super cool. I'm also going to push the saturation quite a bit, but that's about it for the color grading. Awesome. Let's compare the image to before real quick one more time. So on the left, we have our base raw file compared to our almost finished edit on the right side. Much better, but maybe you already noticed these buildings on each side are kind of leaning in a very strange way. I want to fix that. So let's head into the transform tab. I'm going to click on this icon right here, which opens up the guided upright tool. And what I can do with that is I can uh, draw a line along the buildings. I'm basically telling Lightroom, this line should be straight. So I, I have done this on one side. I, I also need to do it on the other side in order for Lightroom to take some action. So I'm going to draw another line on a building's edge, which should be straight like this. And as you can see, Lightroom will automatically fix the lens distortion. And now we have a really solid looking straight image. That's it for the transformation. Now all that's left to do is some sharpening in the details tab. So let's do that. I'm going to bring down the radius all the way. I'm going to increase the day details all the way up. Then let's hold down the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. And with the masking, we can nicely target only the important parts just like this. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. We need to clean up this image. Usually I would do this in Photoshop, but let's give Lightroom a try. I'm going to click on that remove tool right here. And we want to go into the remove mode. Make sure generative AI is selected. We don't need to visualize spots at the moment. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint over the things I want to get rid of. So up here are a few tree branches and right here is a bicycle, which we don't need. I also want to get rid of that window up here because I have cut it a little bit at the top. I don't think it looks good. So let's see what Lightroom will do. Hopefully it works. Otherwise, I'm going to switch over to Photoshop. All right, that is not looking too bad. There's still some leftovers right here. I'm just going to paint over it one more time and on the other side. Let's try it one more time. Much better. I think I'm also going to try to get rid of some of these people in the distance. Perfect. And finally, I'm going to get rid of that door handle because it's a bit distracting. All right, that worked perfectly. Here we have the finished image. So let me know what you think about this Blue Hour HDR look created using only Lightroom. If you have any questions, let me also know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.